What sort of leader would Nick Clegg make? I think Nick Clegg would be an excellent leader. I mean, I've always said that I think uh, Nick has enormous, um, uh, enormous qualities. Uh, I've also said that I think probably not this time. Uh, but so I he have wouldn't no be doubt. a calamity? Oh, absolutely not. So why have you issued a briefing document called Calamity Clegg? Your taxes will go up. The only people who will get a tax break from David Cameron and the Conservatives are millionaires. The Tories haven't told people, haven't been straight with people, haven't come clean with people about how they're going to pay for a whole series of tax bribes that they're making uh, in, this, uh, in this election campaign. And they know that they will have to drop a VAT bombshell on every household in this country to make their sums add up. Congratulations to you both, Prime Minister, Deputy Prime Minister. Secondly, Prime Minister, do you now regret when once asked what your favourite joke was, you replied, Nick Clegg, and Deputy Prime Minister, what do you think of that? I, we're all going to have... I, I'm afraid I did oh, once. Right. I'm, I'm, uh, <laughs> we're all... Come back! As leader, I will defend party policy as it is, which is to scrap tuition fees. No group has been more angry with this government than students. No man more of a target than Nick Clegg. Today, for the first time, he agreed to come face to face with his critics. You signed an NUS pledge saying you would scrap tuition fees. Now, when you joined the coalition government, you didn't compromise by not scrapping them. You tripled them. You completely sold out your principles and you have lied to your voters. How could you do that? By definition, if you haven't won an election and you're having to compromise with another party, it means that you can't, you can't introduce every policy. I won't apologise. With that, the coalition be, leaders uh, walked off the set. David Cameron quickly removed his lapel microphone. Nick Clegg forgot he still had his on. We keep doing this, but we don't find anything to bloody disagree on in a bloody TV debate. Nick Clegg then looks down at his lapel, realising there's a microphone still on. Watching it again, you can see how his press chief, the lady on the right, tugs his arm to remind him he's still mic'd up. He glances apologetically back at his press aide. She bites her lip as she looks across at David Cameron's chief of staff. But clearly the results have been immeasurably more crushing and unkind than I could ever have feared. For that, of course, I must take responsibility and therefore I announce that I will be resigning as leader of the Liberal Democrats. A leadership election will now take place according to the party's rules. Uh, Nigel Farage, Nick Clegg says you just want to pull up the drawbridge. Why? No, Nick. I don't want to put up the drawbridge. I want to control who's coming over the drawbridge. That's what we get by being an independent nation. In that case, if being in the European Union is the genesis of all the anxiety about immigration, why is it then, per head of population, Australia and Canada have twice higher rates of immigration than we do? They're not members of the European Union. The United States has a net increase of a million people every year. And They're not a member of the European Union. The reason that Australia and Canada, pro rata, can take more migrants than we can is they've got rather more space and rather more room than we have. No. Nick Clegg, you wrote in Prospect magazine in 2002 that if we remain outside the euro, 
we will simply continue to subside into a position of relative poverty and inefficiency <laughs> compared to our more prosperous European neighbours. Would you, um, would you like to delete that now? Yes. <laughs> yes, I would. Can I just... Uh, and I'm going to talk to Henry. It's where, too where late, you, I've got the cash. Can I, can I talk to... <laughs> hey, Henry, where are you? Uh, yeah, so I don't think I'm probably the best placed person to talk about tuition fees. Um, so I won't, I, won't, I won't address that point. Just to point out, though, that if you don't earn, you won't have to pay. But anyway, never mind. Um, now, the point I want to talk to you about, Henry, is because you said, you know, about your future. You're qualified to afford it. Over, over, over four that's decades, that's you're doing relatively because, well. That's mainly because we thwarted what you wanted to do, which was to join the Euro. I mean, that's been well, our salvation. And, and actually, I mean, the, the only reason that well, Britain is in any way content to be in the European Union is that we, and I do mean we, the Conservatives, yeah. if, uh, back, in the, back in the day, stopped us being in either Schengen or the Euro while you were busy campaigning for us going to the Euro. <laughs> no, I'd shout, no, don't, I'd shout. Don't laugh about it. You would have brought this country this to ruin. This is a no, dangerous no, no, no. fantasy. <clears throat> the idea that there's going to be a European Air Force, a European Army, it's it proposed. is simply not true. Oh, the, dear, prob dear, the problem dear. with people like Nigel Farage is they, 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 they swing at windmills. They, they see do? conspiracies everywhere. I wouldn't do? be surprised if Nigel Farage soon tells us that the moon landing was a do? fake, that Barack Obama isn't American, that Elvis isn't <laughs> dead. On Wednesday, we launched the European Defence Fund, and yesterday, the first command centre for our military training missions uh, was established in Brussels. And many believed and told me, you cannot imagine how many and how many times, that it would, have been, it would have proven to be impossible for us to have a first command center in Brussels for our military training missions, or that it would take us years, decades to do it. It took us a few weeks. I, Stephen Ingram, being the returning officer at the election held on Thursday, June 2017, do hereby give notice that the number of votes cast for each candidate at the election is as follows. Nick Clegg, Liberal Democrats, 19,756. Yeah. Jared O'Mara, Labour Party, 21,881. There will be some people, there will be some people who like those Japanese soldiers who continued fighting the last war because no one had told them it had ended in some Pacific island, who will carry on arguing and arguing and arguing. The, the rest of us, the rest of us will just move on and carry on with the rest of our lives. And yesterday, Barnier held meetings with yet another unofficial British delegation in the shape of arch europhiles Ken Clark, Lord Adonis and former leader of the Liberal Democrats, Nick Hi. Clegg, who is no longer Hi. even an elected politician. We're going to see Michel Barnier and a few other people in the European Commission. Are you here to stop Brexit? <laughs> if only with that.